Okay, I am in another state right now and geographically, <laughs> I guess mentally too. Now, I wanna clear something out because people are completely twisting and misinterpreting my gym attack, attacked on gymnasiums and they're getting all butthurt and I wanna clear something to go into even more that words couldn't do in a caption. So why I feel that if all gyms closed down, society would be better off. What a gym represents is a place that you need to go and you can only get better there. If you even make the mistake of hiring somebody there to do the work safely because you're older or you're, you've been scared or you got hurt by somebody else or something happened and you think there's a right way to train or good moves to do, you'll go hire these clowns. And you'll do it three to five to five days, maybe at the most, maybe an hour and out of 168 hours a week, 60 of those you sleep, five of them, you're preparing for life's activities. You're preparing to express the emotions of life. You're preparing for the forces of life in five fucking hours at a place that's not, not even yours. So there's one thing that you have this place that you need to go, and if you can't go there, you don't get better, you don't improve, you don't evolve, you don't adapt. So that's perverted, that's warped, that's twisted, that fucks with people's development and um, uh, their evolution. Um, then you have the concept of everyone's complaining like, well, the weather here in Chicago, or the weather here in uh, Greenland, the weather here in Canada, the weather here in, I have to go to the gym because the weather, because then they say, if when I say the gym is everywhere, that means just it's outside because I'm always outside. I'm fucking outside because I live in California and chose to live there um, after being in Chicago for 14 years. So I would, I would never go to a cold climate ever, ever, ever. It just, I don't thrive there, but I'm not saying outside is the only other alternative. Hi little bud. Um, it's everywhere. Your gym your gym per se, the place where you can f intent, focus on a move by yourself, nobody else competing next to you, nobody else watching you to see if it's good or bad, nobody observing you, nobody on you, you're not distracted by a podcast, you're not distracted by a child, you're not distracted by a spouse or a friend or a sister or whatever, you literally are present to push yourself to a maximum or minimum of whatever level of stimulus greater than life. That is training. So it could be your kitchen. It could be your car. It could be the hallway. It could be your bedroom. It could be the bathroom. It could be the office space. It could be the garden outside. It could be the garage. It's any freaking place you exist is the opportunity for training to take place is what I'm talking about. But we don't have that now. Now the weather is cold, so I got to go to my place. And then if that place is cold, I guess I just do the treadmill at home. I don't know why people have treadmills anymore unless they're lifting them up because there's no training taking place on a treadmill. In fact, there's a total degradation on stuff like that and bikes and everything else, um, which I've explained. Uh, so there's that component to it, to where a gym, because of weather, again, disempowering every single human being. <laughs> Fish jumping. We are not at the current lowest state of evolution I've ever seen in 21 years because we don't have opportunities to go to the gym. They're open all over the place. Everybody's got more and more gym memberships, but we're more disconnected from exactly what is training and what is our responsibility to put our bodies in a position to be able to adapt. I'm not talking about in training, slow the de-evolution process, slow the aging process because everybody's gotten you to believe that you decline with age. That's what going to these gyms, that's what's hiring these people, that's what's doing it. Well, I go to my gym three days a week and, and I feel good. Right, but you're worse this year than you were last year. And then the next year's worse and the next year's worse. Well, I mean, at least it's, cause then there's the at least crowd, at least they're doing something. Right, and that's gotten us to where we are now. At least there's something. No more of the at least, the expectation of the human is full capacity thriving, if that's what you want. If you don't want it, just shut up. Don't comment, stay out of it. Stay away from the people trying to evolve and adapt to a level greater than they were last year or yesterday or a week ago or whatever. Um, 
But that's what this gym culture and this fitness culture has gotten everybody. It's another outsourcing. It's just like you go to the therapist or the body worker or the guru or the chiropractor, or the acupuncturist and the massage therapist to heal. We've outsourced everything to these passive treatments to feel better and it's, it makes us radically worse. All they do is just get in the way of healing, one, by their activities, but two, there's no responsibility on the person. So the gym culture, the gym being a building that you have to go to to get your movements done, it doesn't set you up for adaptation of what I'm talking about. It sets you up to do, you went zero times, you went three, but then you still have this further outsourcing that you're disempowered to even think that you can't do it on your own because you need the watchful eyes of Sandra who's got nice legs and fucking smells like like oh and there's a there's a culture there and they're all supportive yeah I fucking get it like I totally get it like we don't have any values or beliefs or if you do you're on your own so then when somebody else like thinks the way you do or whatever you just get all like vibrant out and it's like oh my god I gotta go here Go to the gym just to be social, but your training is all day, every day. Your training is the second you wake up. You are finding opportunities to move with a maximum intention or minimum intention greater than what life's gonna demand in the sovereignty of your own body, very minimal equipment, very minimal space. You, present, right there, able to push yourself. And since you're evolving each day, the you entering the move, it's a totally different move. So to say we need all these variations and all this other shit, it's not. Your intention completely brings it in and makes the changes in the adaptation. If you wanna bring in equipment, go right ahead, but the intention drives the equipment. The equipment doesn't stimulate the body. Just like a three pound dumbbell doesn't heal your shoulder. That makes no sense. But this gym culture needs to stop. It, it's, it's one of the most toxic things we've got going for us, but again, as I said, if you want to go to a gym and participate in the stuff, that's fine. Do your 20 to 30 different movement inputs with intention on your own. And then just show up at the gym and fuck around and just hang out with people. Nothing wrong with that. But to think that there's some sort of health uh, gained, health, health uh, fragment gained or an input gained by you being under the watchful eyes of somebody. Or you going to somewhere because it's cold out in the gymnasium makes zero sense and and that's the deeper picture on this whole thing um there's maybe maybe a sports team maybe a group of people around a common goal uh to win something and and that would make sense but again if you are with a team and you're showing up to your gym three to five days a week to go through your programs the shit you do in those three to five days a week is a representation of what you're doing on your own anyway you're not going to get better in those environments just like a team practice. You don't get better at a team practice. Team practice is what you express because you did all the work before and all the work afterwards and it's a time, okay, here's what I'm gonna show what I've been working on and that's what you go with. But that, we need to get back to this whole thing of, because we're not evolving. We have these spurts of these good and we, we flashes of brilliance and then we just come crashing down to a level again, that I've never ever seen before. And it's alarming and scary and comical and embarrassing and, and fucked up really. But, um, Oh Jesus, ripe. There's so much life going on. <laughs> I don't know if the fish dig what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, that's my take on the gym and the deeper levels as to what it breeds and it it doesn't breed uh sovereignty it doesn't breed freedom it doesn't breed you know self-confidence as much as they'll pitch it and you're only self-confident when the whole fucking group is around you or you're only self-confident when the trainer's watching you or you're only self-confident when you beat the screen or you do the you meet the heart rate or you meet the goal that they measure because they got to keep you measuring goals so that you stick around and keep paying them shit it, it's beyond fucked up it's right up there with these passive treatment artists uh uh soft tissue people doing things to take away symptoms that have you believing that you need to drive down the road that some your health is in the hands of somebody else that your power is in the hands of somebody else and every inch of that i think we've seen i hope we've seen it's just as bad on the health side of things in the green side and the holistic side and the training side and the coach side that's why i'm coming at it so hard it's almost worse than the other side trying to disempower us. 
all it, that's why i said all systems need to crash not just this fucking one that you guys are watching keep perpetuating on tv and with these freedom groups and all this other bullshit that's continuing to go on i can't believe it's even still going um but it's only going because you guys keep sharing the shit but all of that needs to come crashing down every angle that it is to take away what it is to be a human and to be a human number one thing that is human our ability to adapt our ability to adapt to a level of intention greater than what life is and that's on us that is solely 100 percent in the vicinity of the being and if we aren't promoting that or something isn't helping or facilitating that i want you out i want to cut your fucking legs off i want to blow the buildings up i want to be done with them metaphorically speaking i know that sounded kind of harsh uh but no out that's why i'm i'm <laughs> trying to speak as much truth so that people can see like Oh, damn, that actually makes sense. Um, interesting. Okay, well, I'll try this other way. Because again, it's your, it's your journey in this whole thing. I'm just making suggestions. But then once you see like, holy shit, I'm 68, had arthritis or whatever. I have kids or grandkids. I've got a business to run. And I just got 32 training inputs completely on my own. And I just did that for a year. Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm better than I was the year before. This aging thing is bullshit. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I know. <laughs> so you mean we could all do this? Yeah. As soon as we stop giving into these things that we have existing so that really so we can feel good about ourselves and so people could have jobs. So there's like a place that you can belong to. <sighs> Gotta cut it out. All right. Hope that clears that up. Boom.